Today we're going to be doing some more expansion, but can we do it without plunging the company into the darkness that we did last time? We did return to the light and I'd like to stay there, so let's see if we can manage it. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD Let's Play, where we're doing our third in a series of starting the episode with a time lapse to improve and expand the network. Now, as you can see here, last episode we dipped well into the negatives of the operating profit, and I'd like to do that today, but without. I'd like to do the upgrade today. I wouldn't like to go into the negatives. But I'd like to do the upgrade today without going into the negatives. And today we're going to be looking at the coal. Now the coal's not actually too bad because it's had some improvements already along already in the series since we started out. So things like um, the, this, this, these platforms here have been divided up so that they're servicing different um, sections. This one's off to the left, this one's downwards. And um, things like that. this bit's been sectioned out here so that we've got a nice little platform between we probably need another train on there but we can't afford it at the minute we've only got 10 grand in the bank um down here we're servicing two mines uh, we've got a mine here that's not been done we've got three here there was four one of them closed down so obviously we're not actually getting the amount transported high enough around here although we've got two trains loading so it should be fine i would have thought it uh we've got another coal mine over here so do we do a shuttle service down into here i think we should is that going to be with road vehicles? Yeah, I think it will be because we've actually got a road vehicle station there. So if we just put one here and just shuttle them backwards and forwards, it's a bit too short for trains in my opinion. So one of the things we'll do is we'll go over the existing line, just make sure that everything's okay. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and we will add any new coal mines that have popped up. So there's one there, there's one here as well. Although that seems to be pretty much in the middle of nowhere. So what we'll probably do is have its own station and then we'll borrow those platforms. Uh, round here there aren't any new ones. No new ones round here. There's there's one here that we could do and one there and one there. So there's, there are three round here. So I suppose we could put a coal line from this one. And yeah, it's, it's going to be quite a long journey actually for that one. So we're going to have to be careful about how we do it. And then at the other end of the coal network, down here, we've got to check things out. So, uh, let's see. Oh, God, this, this new scrolling. So over here we're doing all right. We've still got lots of coal places. I think, actually, there's a new one there, which I'm not 100% sure we're covering. So maybe we'll try and make sure we are. Uh, we've got our two little close ones and the one down here closed down but i think are there any more around here yeah there is this one down here so i think maybe a oh whether that's a rail line a rail line or not I, i'm not sure yet i'm not sure but we'll come around here and we'll add all the other coals in and we'll expand so let's get that started so we're both at the uh north uh hub and the south hub improvements and expansion. Let's go. Thank you. 
So the North and South Hub have now had extensions and upgrades and you can see here we've got a train actually going the wrong way. We've got two trains going the wrong way because they're stuck because I missed a bit of track. So hopefully that doesn't hurt the flow on this network and the operating profit overall. This time we didn't see the big dip that we saw last time. It's because I wasn't rebuilding anything. I was adding to and tweaking. Now on this line I've tweaked and put some of the big big double slips off the main line and hopefully that will help with the flow of this line. You can see we've got vehicles using those slips already. So hopefully that's good. Also I've added some more vehicles to it. We've got some coming out, we've got some more trains coming and I've just got two engines on them now. They seem to be able to get up to full speed pretty easily. Um, even even with just two engines. So this one over here um, is going 121 kilometers an hour at the minute, even after only just coming out of the station. And they do quite a lot of stopping and starting, waiting for each other. We might actually have to even upgrade this line to make it even better. But there's a bit of clumping around here at the moment because I've just added so many trains. Now, speaking of the trains, let's have a look at the list and have a look at the replacing situation because I'm pretty sure I put this on hold. I did, okay. 
Now, do we want to replace for a different train? Let's check things out. So, these MJS diesels, the only ones we've got left of them are the ones at the factory here that do the shuttling. Ugh. I mean, we could update them. They cost a lot less to run, and we don't really care about that short journey in the same way. So, for now, I'm going to ignore them. We'll, we'll update them later. Uh, the Floss 47 is at 81% reliability, and reliability for me is key during this sort of let's play where profit is so important and breakdowns are turned on. Now, I have had comments in the past about people that say, oh, why don't you try playing with breakdowns off for a change? I have. I've done that in the past. Um, it's just out of the two options. I prefer the extra challenge of having them on and having to figure out the best place to put the depots and where to make them double and where to make them force. And it's an, it, To me, it's an aspect of the game that I enjoy. So I have tried it without, um, for anybody who doesn't know. Okay, so reliability... So, the most reliable at the moment is this Kelling 3100. Uh, again, it's... A, is it a diesel? Yes, it's a diesel. So there are some electric trains out there at the minute, but they're not currently the ones I think I would choose. So with 82% reliability, that's good. The speed is 104. Now this, to me, is very much a non-passenger one. Uh, the running costs are actually lower. It goes a lot slower. Um, I think the 37 diesel is actually probably... Why did I choose the floss? What? Oh, right. It's because I've got the floss selected. So if we go and look at the 37, there's the floss and it's 81%, 160. Yeah, I'm just wondering, is there any that's a lot better than this? Not really. Okay, so we're going to carry on upgrading these trains. Um, now, some of the trains will go faster, some of them won't. And some of you pointed this out in the comments, and it's not something I've discussed yet. So let's discuss it now, because a few of you have come up with this. So, for example, these trains over... Okay, they might not be a good example, because we've got multiple headed trains. But they're pulling certain wagons, and in the game's settings, uh, there's a setting in here for speed limit... Uh, limitations. Is it in limitations? Uh, let's see. A vehicle never expires. No, that's not turned to allow. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Enable wagon speed limits. Okay, so this is what some of you have been talking about. So when this is enabled, it also uses the speed limits of wagons to decide the total maximum speed of the train. So when I look at the trains, one of the main things I'm doing is, of course, the reliability. The next thing I'm looking at is things like speed and all that sort of stuff. And you can see down here that the maximum speed of this one's 104, 144, the Floss 47 is 160. Now, apparently some of the wagons that I'm using will not allow that 160 mile an hour. Um, is it kilometers per hour in this game? I think it's kilometers per hour. But if, if we have a look, I think we'll find it's not far off. So let's go to available trains. And the passenger carriage doesn't have a maximum speed. Neither does the mail van. Now, the livestock van has a maximum speed. So does the, what was it, the bulk wagon. And the uh, PS goods wagon. And the tank and the flatbed. So all of these others down here, these freighty sort of ones, have a maximum speed. Okay. Now, the reason why I haven't mentioned it yet is because the maximum speed of our trains, for example the 47, is only just reaching the maximum speed of our trucks in this Let's Play. So in the future, those of you who have commented, yes, you're correct. In the future, there's no point in me buying faster trains than what these wagons can go. And it is kilometres per hour. But at the moment, our fastest train is actually the same as the maximum speed of the wagon. So that's not a problem. With all of our upgrades gone and done and nearly uh, 7 million in the bank, we're going to carry on doing the replacing for these. So we're going to get the Floss 47 in. We probably won't replace these vehicles 
anytime soon again and the reason for that is one we've just done it and two i'm probably wait for a decent electric train so that we can electrify the network and get things moving a bit quicker and three is that factor of the fact that the wagons don't want to go faster than this so we're going to have to start splitting the network up at the moment everything is using the same engine apart from those eight but we're going to have to start splitting it. So let's uh, unpause the game a little bit and see how our money dive bombs as we upgrade from uh, 44 kilometers an hour to 160 kilometers an hour. Um, our money will disappear quite quickly doing that. Okay, so there we go. That is essentially the end of those three mini upgrades. Um, we're going to be expanding and doing other things. Uh, the amount of passengers and stuff at York is unbelievable. Um, let's have a look at these trains here. Yeah, so you see that some of these are empty, but yeah, it'll be all right. It's weird how the passenger carriages look one way in one orientation but when the train goes around the corner into the or other orientation the carriages look completely different it's, it's just a bit odd isn't it in my opinion but there we go so if this train wants to go into a depot it will be able to there there we go that's exactly why we use double depots folks i mean yes this one here did have to stop but there's only a certain amount of throughput we're going to get on this just looked like it was being a bit busy we've got our depots being used there by two trains uh, we've still got some depots here. Shouldn't really have them because you get this situation where you're blocking trains. So maybe we need to add some depots in. How? Oh, an oil refinery explosion. We don't care about that. Uh, we need to add some depots in. So we're going to do. Let's remove this signal. So if we come straight up here. How long are these trains? They're six in length, aren't they? And if I come off the main line there, that gives me not really enough space to do this. Actually, no, that looks like it's about right. So if I take that out there, I think that'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it. Um, I'm not 100% sure that we've got a full leading line in, but that doesn't matter. Let's remove these when the train's gone. Look at that. We've got a train that's broken down on its way into the depot. That's just like the the insult, isn't it? Uh, how long did I do this section? Eight. Oh, that one just got renewed. We've got the space, so let's do that one as nine. Put the depot over here. There we go. So it's a forced depot. But it's an optional forced depot. So the train can choose to go down the sideline into the depot. Or it can choose not to. Okay. There we go. So that's going to hopefully improve the flow on the main line there. It seems to be working okay here. Hang on a minute. They're optional depots. No, I want them to be forced. So the train will only take the slip line if there is, if it needs to go to the depot, like these ones. Brilliant, okay. Uh, all looking good. Goods line is busy but moving. Everything is busy but moving, which is fantastic. The amount of passengers we've got is absolutely ridiculous. These trains coming out of London, let's have a look and see what they've got in them. Oh, they're just full of everything. Let's Let's get some new vehicles. Uh, you let's just check that we're cloning the right kind that's the 47 it would be bad to clone the old kind of vehicle and then where's it gone it's just sat in the depot at the moment oh we've got some signals missing i don't know if anybody's spotted this there we go we've got some new trains here signals going into this bit and we haven't got the money oh we have now signals going in here are missing. So when a train is pulling out of London Station, we should be able to allow the depots to empty. Why is that not a double depot? That should be a double depot. Okay, how strange. And 
I guess we want to remove the crossover pieces because that can cause issues. You don't have to remove those crossing points. It's just if a train gets lost, it's more likely to be guided back to where it needs to be than to just go backwards and forwards between the two double depots. So London Line's doing good. We've got some more trains on there. Goods Line is busy, flowing. We've got plenty of trains at the goods out, ready to pick up. And the goods shuttle's looking nice. What's the ratings and the stuff at the goods shuttle? Only 77%. The ratings is because of the train. Right, so the rating of a station is made up of five different things. One of those things is how good the train is. And these trains aren't good. We need to upgrade them to get better ratings. More ratings means more goods. More goods means more money. So actually, replacing these vehicles is a good idea. I mean, it seems a bit daft that you would do it for any other reason than to get a more reliable faster train we don't need a faster train we don't need a more reliable train we just need a little shuttle but replacing those vehicles will be important for this entire part of the network okay looks like we're quite busy bringing things in here uh, let's get rid of those bits of line i'll just get rid of like i said it's not important to get rid of those bits but i'll do odd ones when i see them and looks like this junction here is doing okay. We've got the uh, north-south coal line coming through. And then we've got all the vehicles here. Now, this train obviously just wants to go straight to the station, which is fine. We haven't got that much. Of a, I was going to say, we haven't got that much of a hold-up, but we got a little bit of one, but only, mainly because one train broke down there, so that's okay. Now, look at this little turnaround that I put in. Why is we heading for farm in east? Right, so this train for some reason ended up on the wrong track, and that little turnaround there just saved my bacon on a number of occasions. So we've got a little bit of a pile up going on here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to improve the entrance to this station. We're going to split the two platforms up. We're still going to have some depots. So the closest I can get the depot to the station is here. There we go. And then we'll just do that. And we can, I think we can remove, uh-oh, no, it's not uh-oh. I, I don't know. We'll just remove all the signals. No, we won't remove all the signals. We'll put one here and one there leading in. And the trains should sort themselves out. Now, the weird thing is, is that... Oh, that train, I think, had already decided it wanted to come down here. Which is a bit odd. And go straight through. But we'll see how this this extra loop works here. In fact, we'll just fast forward just a little bit. See, that one broke down, so that one's causing a small delay there. That one still decided to come this way, but presumably it wants to go to the depot. Which is fine. That one decides it wants to go to the other way. Again, which is fine. But this one presumably just wants to go to the station. Yeah, um, that's quite a distance back for the trains to actually want to wait. But I think we're starting to clear the backlog. Um, there's still a lot of breakdowns happening, so I'm going to have to probably have a look at that at some point. But the oh, that's something that I didn't want to happen. There we go. Disconnect the platforms. Brilliant. Okay, so that's going to provide us with better flow there. Our steel line looks busy, but at the moment it's okay. I think we might have to upgrade it. Yeah, we might have to upgrade it. How much steel have we got waiting? Wow, too much. Way too much steel. Let's throw a few more trains at it. Have we now done re replacing on all of our vehicles? Replace vehicles. Okay, so all of those are done. And we've got 29 of the 37s left. Um, with all the extra trains that we're putting here on this steel network, I'm beginning to think we're going to have a little bit of a problem. And we might have to do some upgrades. Probably on... 
See, we've actually built this quite close to the steel mill itself. We've got a yeah, we've got a bit of a slowdown around the depots here. Oh yeah, this this is interesting. How am I going to resolve this? I mean, we have got depots on the main line, so that is again going to slow things down, just like here. Look, we've got a train waiting. But not massively. It's not going to, like, clog the whole lineup. It just makes a little bit of a temporary slowdown. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to add depots off the main line there. Maybe I should do that in a live stream or something. I think it's about time we had a live episode, isn't it? We'll see when I can slip one in sometime soon. So watch out on Discord and social media for me announcing a live episode of this series if you want to get involved with that. Uh, let's have a look here. So most of our trains, if not all of our trains here, have now um, upgraded. And our ratings are now 97%. There we go. That's what was holding us back. The, the uh, How good the trains were. Fantastic. Now we've got higher ratings there, we're probably going to see a higher percent transported. Look, 95% transported, 107,000 crates of goods. So the factory challenge now, after all that upgrading, is going really well. The Exeter challenge is, well, I know I'm behind some viewers, but we're doing pretty good. We've got 29,000 in here. Um, we can fund new buildings to try and push that up a little bit. And also we can grow out more of the road network. Um, I'm not exactly sure how well Exeter and Exeter train. Oh my goodness. The five and a half thousand passengers waiting there. How many at London South? Quite a lot as well. Okay, let's check the train orders. Okay, so we actually start at Exeter Halt with the train orders. So let's get our new trains in here. Just fix up these. Oh, I thought that was going to be a crash then. Just the way those two trains just went hurtling towards each other. Um, new vehicle. Clone this one. Just going to throw some more trains at it. Now, this line should move quite smoothly, even with lots of trains on it, because uh, we've got these really good depots. even though there's, And there's four lines as well. So we've got four lines and the double slip depots, which should sort things out quite nicely. We haven't got any depots along this section. It's quite a long section to not have depots at. Normally I probably would love to have had some depots in the middle here, but it's a four-way diagonal line. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And speaking of not doing anything, I'm not going to do anything else. That is going to be the end of today's episode. We've done some improvement, tweaks and upgrades, and things are going quite well. We're just going to check in on Birmingham. Ah! Yeah, Birmingham's starting to get busy. We put this passenger line in recently. Even Manchester's starting to get busy. So, I'm beginning to think we should start to look at doing some improvements to that line as well and expand. Now at the moment we only have the three passenger lines. Uh, we have the East Coast Main Line, the Exeter Line and the Manchester Line. I suppose we could call this one the York. So we've got York, Manchester and Exeter. Now I'm thinking with the Exeter Line it might be nice to have a couple of stops along the way. I still want to do that but I just can't decide where to go. Maybe Reading. But that's going to be all there. Leave your suggestions down in the comment section about where you think I should build and what lines you think I should put in next. But I'm quite happy with most of the network we've got. We've got most of this part of the country uh, covered up. We've got lines going all over the place. Wales not so much, but then again, there is a lot of highland and not a lot of industries. So maybe there's something that we can bring in there with the industries. We'll have to have a look. We've got the uh, the New Island Challenge. That's something that we're still going to do. The uh, This up here, our Inverness... Uh, oh my goodness, we've got so many passengers sat there. The Inverness to Glasgow line. Uh, well, I say line. It's kind of a line. Let, let's clone the vehicles. We're going to get more vehicles on this. Actually, I'm going to sell all those vehicles because... The orders actually start at this end, so I don't want them to be created at that end. 
just for them to drive all the way over here without doing anything. So, there we go. We can clone that now. Get all those shared orders. They must have shared orders. Yes, they do have shared orders. Let's see if we can get all these on the go and get them all transporting out. Maybe we can expand this road network to include some other nearby places. Maybe link uh, Glasgow to Edinburgh Road. Maybe we'll do a little bit of roads. Uh, we haven't got any aircraft yet, but I am going to put a couple of airports in. Only at a few key places. Um, the only problem, if I do that, I've got to be careful not to link existing lines. For example, if I link Glasgow with an airport to London, then all the trains... Um, so yeah, all the trains that are picking up at like Peterborough could then get passengers for Gaz uh, Glasgow and Inverness because of the cargo distribution. They could go all the way down there and then all the way on the aircraft. And I don't really want that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll I'll figure it out. It's one of the interesting challenges. That's all for now. Remember. Thoughts, ideas and questions down in the comments section. And if you want to support me, consider checking out the Viewer Plus program on my website, masterhellish.net. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.